Armajul Platform. Sutra. With the commentary of Tripitaka Master Hwa. English translation by the Buddhist text. Translation Society. Chapter 7. Opportunities and Conditions. Sutra. The master obtained the Dharma at Huangmei and returned to Tzaoho village in Shaozhou where no one knew him. But Lu Qi Liao, a scholar, received him with great courtesy. Qi Liao's aunt, Pichinai Wu Chin Sung, constantly recited the Mahaparinirvana Sutra. When the master heard it, he instantly grasped its wonderful principle and explained it to her. The Pichinai then held out a scroll and asked about some characters. The master said, I cannot read, please ask about the meaning. If you cannot even read, how can you understand the meaning, asked the Pichinai. The master replied, the subtle meaning of all Buddhas is not based on language. The Pichinai was startled and she announced to all the elders and virtuous ones in the village, here is a gentleman who possesses the way. We should ask him to stay and receive our offerings. Tzao Shula Yang great-grandson of the Marquis Wu of the Wei dynasty, came rushing to pay homage, along with the people of the village. At that time the pure dwellings of the ancient Pao Lin Temple, which had been destroyed by war and fire at the end of the Sui dynasty, were rebuilt on their old foundation. The master was invited to stay and soon the temple became a revered place. He dwelt there a little over nine months when he was once again pursued by evil men. The master hid in the mountain in the front of the temple, and when they set fire to the brush and trees, he escaped by crawling into a rock to hide. The rock still bears the imprints of the master's knees and of his robe where he sat in lotus posture. Because of this it is called the Rock of Refuge. Remembering the fifth patriarch's instructions to stop at Hawaii and hide at Hawaii, he went to conceal himself in those two cities. Commentary after receiving the mind seal dharma from the fifth patriarch Hung Jen, the sixth patriarch returned to Shaozhou. He thereupon went to Tzao Ho village, the present day Shao Quan in Chu Chang district. When he arrived in the vicinity of Nanhua Temple, which before had been Pao Lin Temple, no one knew that he was the one who held the robe and bowl. Lu Qi Liao was a wealthy retired official who enjoyed studying the Buddha Dharma. He welcomed the master reverently and made offerings to him. Qi Liao and his aunt, Pichinai Wu Chin Sung, Limitless Treasury, were the sixth patriarch's great Dharma protectors. Wu Chin Sung liked to recite the Mahaparinirvana Sutra. This sutra, in ten volumes, was spoken by the Buddha just before he went to Nirvana. Hearing the recitation, the sixth patriarch understood the subtle principle and explained it to the Pichinai. Probably she couldn't read very well, because she asked the master, what is this word? Do you mean you can't read it, said the master. No, I can't, she said. Well, I can't either, said the master, but if you ask about the meaning I can explain it for you. If you can't even read it, how can you know what it means, she asked. The master said, the Buddha's heart, the mind dharma. The wonderful principle of sudden enlightenment, has nothing to do with words. Instead, it points directly to the mind so that we can see our own nature and become Buddhas. Since it is not based on language it doesn't matter whether you can read. Pichinai Wu Chin Tsung thought that was very strange indeed. She told everyone in the village, here is a gentleman who has the way. He is a virtuous Dharma master. He may not be able to read but he's enlightened, so we should make offerings to him. Although she didn't know a lot of characters, Wu Chin Tsung was nevertheless an incredible Pichinai. She ate one meal a day and never lay down to sleep, because she knew that the fourth patriarch recommended these practices. Although her family was wealthy, she kept the precept of never holding money. She studied and recited sutras industriously, and when the time came, she died sitting up in meditation. Many days, many years have passed and her body still has not decayed. Because she was vigorous and worked hard at cultivation and had no sexual desire, her flesh transformed into indestructible Vajra. I saw the body in a temple in Chu Chang. 
It is truly awesome. Among the villagers who paid homage to the great master was the great grandson of Mar Ki Wu. Mar Ki Wu was very intelligent. He was, in fact, as clever as a fox. He was a genius, but he had a tendency to be jealous. Pikshan I Wu Chin Tsung promoted the sixth patriarch, do you know who he is, she would say, he's the rightful successor to the fifth patriarch. He holds the robe and bowl. One flower may be beautiful, but it looks much better surrounded by greenery. If no one had protected him, the sixth patriarch would surely have been murdered by Shen Su's gang, or those of other religions. His Dharma assembly flourished because his disciples and lay people such as Pikshanai Wu Chin Tsung and her nephew, Lu Qi Liao, the scholar, guarded and protected him. Vinaya Master Tiong Ying also brought several hundred of his students to study with the master, and each student told his friends to come. So every day for lunch there were between 1,500 and 2,000 people, seven or eight hundred of whom were members of the Sangha. Everyone made heartfelt offerings to help rebuild Nanhua Temple. Some gave 10,000 ounces of silver, some gave a million. They asked the master to live there and before long it was a great Bodhimanda big enough for several thousand people. A little over nine months later, several hundred of Shen Su's men left Huang Mei, passing through the Tau mountain range on their way to Nanhua Temple. They traveled for over two months. If they hadn't been intent on killing the master and stealing the robe and bowl, they would have given up after a couple of days. Think it over, sixteen or seventeen years had passed since the transmission, and the master had only been staying at Nanhua for nine months when the evil men returned. It's not easy to be a patriarch. Unless you are a phony. Real patriarchs live in great danger. The sixth patriarch had spiritual powers and he knew that not just one or two, but several hundred men were after him. He hid in the rock of refuge which is just big enough to hold one person sitting in meditation. The evil men mingled in with the large crowd and stealthily set fire to the mountain. They burned off the entire area, but never found the master. While hiding, the master probably meditated with great intensity because the texture of his robe and the marks of his knees can still be seen imprinted in the rock. When I was at Nanhua Temple I sat in the rock for a time, but I wasn't seeking refuge, I was just trying it out. When you sit inside it, no one can see you. Piksha Fahai Sutra When Piksha Fahai of Chu Chang City in Shaozhou first called on the patriarch, he asked, Will you please instruct me on the sentence, Mind is Buddha? The master said, When one's preceding thoughts are not produced this is mind and when one's subsequent thoughts are not extinguished this is Buddha. The setting up of marks is mind, and separation from them is Buddha. Were I to explain it fully, I would not finish before the end of the present age. Listen to my verse. When the mind is called wisdom, then the Buddha is called concentration. When concentration and wisdom are equal, the intellect is pure. Understand this Dharma teaching. By practicing within your own nature, the function is basically unproduced, it is right to cultivate both. At these words, Fahai was greatly enlightened and spoke a verse in praise. Chapter 7 Opportunities and Conditions Piksha Fahai This mind is basically Buddha. By not understanding I disgrace myself. I know the cause of concentration and wisdom. Is to cultivate both and separate myself. From all things. Commentary Piksha Fahai, also called Wen Yun compiled and edited the Platform Sutra from the Sixth Patriarch's lectures. Although I dare not say that he liked to be first, when he wrote this chapter he certainly thought, I am the Master's number. One great disciple, and consequently wrote about himself first. Great Master, said Fahai, I don't understand the sentence this mind is Buddha. Please explain it. Do not produce the former thought, said the Master and just that is mind. Do not extinguish the latter thought and just that is Buddha. With neither production nor extinction, the mind itself is Buddha. All appearances are set up by the mind. 
and if you can set up all appearances and be separate from them, that is Buddha. The mind is called wisdom and the Buddha is called concentration. When concentration and wisdom are equal, the mind is Buddha and Buddha is the mind. They are one substance. When thought is pure, then wisdom and concentration, mind, and Buddha, are equal. If you understand the sudden teaching you know that the Buddha is not separate from the mind and the mind is not separate from the Buddha. Concentration is not separate from wisdom and wisdom is not separate from concentration. You don't understand because you have accumulated bad habits for many ages. The wonderful function of the self-nature is basically unproduced and undestroyed, so when you cultivate the mind, you cultivate the Buddha, when you cultivate the Buddha, you cultivate the mind. The same applies to concentration and wisdom. You should cultivate them equally. When you don't understand, there are two, mind and Buddha, when you understand you know that they are originally one. In cultivating concentration and wisdom, you should separate yourself from all marks. Pikshu Fata Sutra Pikshu Fata of Hangzhou left home at age seven and constantly recited the Dharma Flower Sutra, but when he came to bow before the patriarch, his head did not touch the ground. They Master scolded him, saying, If you do not touch the ground, isn't it better not to bow? There must be something on your mind. What do you practice? I have recited the Dharma Flower Sutra over three thousand times, he replied. The master said, I don't care if you have recited it ten thousand times. If you understood the sutra's meaning, you would not be so overbearing, and you could walk along with me. You have failed in your work and do not even recognize your error. Listen to my verse. As bowing is basically to cut off arrogance, why don't you touch your head to the ground? When you possess a self, offenses arise. But forgetting merit brings supreme blessings. The master asked further, What is your name? Fata, he replied. The master said, Your name means Dharma penetration, but what Dharma have you penetrated? He then spoke a verse. Your name means Dharma penetration. And you earnestly recite without pause to rest. Recitation is mere sound. But one who understands his mind is called a bodhisattva. Now, because of your karmic conditions, I will explain it to you. Believe only that the Buddha is without words. And the lotus blossom will bloom from your mouth. Commentary Dharma Masters Fahai, Dharma Si, and Fata, Dharma Penetration, both received the sixth patriarch's Dharma. Fata left home at age seven and constantly recited the Lotus Sutra, but when he met the patriarch he didn't bow properly, he just pretended. He had to make some sort of show of it since everybody knew that the great master held Huang Mei's robe and bowl. But the most respect he could muster was to throw himself hastily on the ground, without even touching his head to the floor, and in his heart he felt that his own merit certainly was greater than the master's. After all, he thought, I've recited the sutra over three thousand times. When Fata saw ordinary people, he couldn't even manage a half bow. He was like a rich snob who only sees other rich snobs and looks down on everyone else. The sixth patriarch took one look and knew that Fata had something on his mind. The Lotus Sutra is seven volumes long and, reciting quickly, you could read through it once in a day, or 365 times a year. Therefore Fata had been reciting it for over ten years. I don't care if you've recited it ten thousand times, said the master. If you really understood it you wouldn't revel in your own merit and could study with me. Not everyone can study with a patriarch, you know. If you have obstructions and afflictions, he may not want you. Therefore, if you come to study here but break the rules, you are not welcome. In order to cultivate with me you must offer up your conduct in accord with the teaching. So many recitations, said the master, and you still don't know how conceited you are. No doubt you think your merit is even greater than mine. Such pride is an offense. But if you could forget your merit and consider your three thousand recitations as no recitations, then your merit would be limitless and boundless. Speak up, Dharma penetration, 
The master continued, What dharma have you penetrated? Fata was speechless. Not bad, the master said, you work hard. However, your recitation is of no benefit because you don't understand what the sutra means. If you could only understand your mind and see your nature, you would be a bodhisattva. You have come all this way from Hangzhou because we have an affinity from circumstances in former lives. Now just believe that the Buddha is without words.